Look, I've got a uh, nice Retina Reflex 3 here. This one looks quite tidy. In fact, it looks completely unmolested. It doesn't even show really any signs of use. This one's here for servicing, of course. It doesn't work well. Everything's a bit stiff and tired. And one of the headline problems was that the leatherette's flapping. That's unusual. It's the original adhesive. It certainly hasn't got any extra adhesive under there. It means the front's never been off. Why the adhesive should have given up, I don't know. Perhaps they just didn't use enough of it. The leatherettes are quite flexible. I'm not really expecting any great trouble with this one. But then I've said that a few times in the past and it's bit me. So, here we have a nice Reflex 3. And I'll take this apart, service it, get it back to the owner as a uh, nice working example. At the moment it's, it's cosmetically very pretty. When it goes back it'll work like a new one. So I'll better start. One of the first problems you face with a Reflex 3 is removing the button, the meter button, from the back of the camera. Now what I've done is I've cut a piece of paper slid that in under the button it's a bit mutilated now but you get the general idea then I used this tool which I use for doing the uh, rewind buttons on the retinas and with the paper protecting the top of the, ca the camera top from scratchings from the tool I was able to get the tool onto the button and rotate it slightly enough to start it unscrewing That looks pretty good. I can't really spot any faults like there. Not with my bare eyes and not with my glasses on. So that was a good result. Okay, so on, onwards and upwards. Off with the rewind knob. That's got a spacer washer under it in this case. For a thin spacer washer. That'll be to lift the top of the button the knob up so it doesn't rub on the top cover. This screw, I've got a tool to unscrew that. Which was just made from a uh, cheap screwdriver and the tip was just ground away to leave two points. A nice simple modification and just the job for things like that. So two screws at the rewind end of the top cover and I can see a trace of dirt there which has come off someone's fingers which tells me that the camera has been used previously single screw at this end of the top cover and the top cover should lift off the shroud in the front of the meter should lift off Now the little plastic window for the meter needle and the top cover that's loose, the adhesive's given up there. So I'll put that carefully to one side so it doesn't get uh, scratched or damaged. Glue that back in later. What have we got here? Well I think the meter better come off next. I'll set this back to its take the lens off first. Now typically this is set set that to ASA 10. And set my speed to B, set my aperture to F1.9. And that would typically be the place I would put that back on the camera. Now I notice that I'm not seeing this wheel in the position I'd normally expect to see it. So I'm going to have to test this meter and see if it's actually accurate. 
back later. Well, the meter appears to read half a stop or so high to me, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Let's cock the film advance. I'm going to remove the meter, so there are two screws that hold the meter. Two short screws here and here. And there's one longer one down here which goes down through that, also goes down through the plate that clamps the, uh, the rack down. So I'm going to be careful with this one because I'm working right next to the needle, which of course I don't want to damage the needle. So I'll lift that screw out. And I can lift my meter out. And the... Uh, Reflex 3 has two meter needles, one which is visible in the finder and one which is visible at the top of the camera. You've got to be very careful with these not to knock, knock anything while you've got them out, otherwise you'll end up with your two needles pointing in different directions, which inevitably means that you're going to make a mistake with your exposure one way or the other. Okay, what have we got? I want the prism off next. You'll see that there's a lot of... Um, whiskers on that uh, prism. I've never known what that is exactly. I believe that it's something to do with the coating or the paint that covers these prisms. Whether it's a, an asphaltum sort of product or something, I don't know. I don't know what those whiskers are. They're, they're clearly a crystalline thing. Um, hopefully it's not blue asbestos. But who would know? It's one of life's mysteries to me. I'll lift that prism off. And the prism, I'm going to carefully wrap that up in a tissue and put that to one side because the all of these components are very delicate and easily damaged. And back to the camera body. Right. We haven't got the screw in here on that uh, bracket anymore, which means that it would be imperative while that screw is missing never ever to move the film advance because what will happen is once the tension goes on the rack, um, it'll end up jumping over a tooth or so and causing you no end of grief. But we're taking the camera apart, not putting it together, so that's not an issue at the moment. I'll take that rewind knob and shaft out. Even though the camera looks pretty, and it's certainly... Uh, looks like a new one. It's going to need completely stripped down and serviced because there will be things wrong with it. Stuff just doesn't stay good by itself. Age gets to the best of us. Alright, off with that bracket. Now this screw that goes through there, that passes through a uh, spacer or guide bush and the screw actually has a shoulder on it towards the top so don't mix it up with one of the others here's our bush and the strap lug and the other screw and take this screw out of the bracket here in this case I've got the shutter sitting in the cocked position. See if we can get this trim off. Yes, there it is. 
Okay, that's the top of the camera for now. Let's turn my attention to the bottom of the camera. And I'll start here by removing the, the patch, leatherette patch on the bottom of the film advance lever. Now that has been off. That, that, that's certainly been serviced before because the adhesive there is not the original adhesive. And it looks pretty well stuck. Let's put a drop of naphtha on there. And I'll just remove the surround for the tripod socket and uh, back catch release. Screws quite tight. Um, the slots in those screw heads is quite narrow. To take care not to let the screwdriver cam out because they're only chromed brass and they're easily scarred up. And the return spring, I need to put that somewhere safe. Alright, what about these screws now on the film advance? Are they going to come loose for me? Just clean that slot out so I can get the screwdriver firmly engaged. Okay, now let's have a go. Lots of downward pressure. That doesn't want to turn. Not about its mates. Well, that one's turning. That one's turning. I think it's mate will too with a bit of assistance. I want a pair of pliers. Okay. Lots of downward pressure and a bit of torque courtesy of the pliers and we're in business I think. Oh it's stuck. It's stiff. It certainly moved but it is reluctant to move. That speaks to me of corrosion. This could cause me problems. That's very, very tight. All right. I'll move it backwards and forwards a bit, see if that loosens it up. Now we're away. That, that all that tightness was round the head of the screw, not round the thread. Effectively it was glued in solidly into the recess here. And it was that, that tightness, that friction, that was preventing that screw rotating. The thread itself, there was no problem with it. So, leather it off the base. Now, because we know the leatherette's loose on the front, let's hope they're loose here too. It's looking promising. That cracking sound is the glue giving up. Which means it's probably the original adhesive. Let's have a look. Yeah, looks like it. And the leatherette's still fairly pliable. Sometimes the leather it hardens and dries up. Now I can see a mark across here. It looks like a crack. It'll certainly create a weakness in the leather it, but as long as I'm aware of it and I take my time and work around it, it doesn't mean that the leather it will break.
Now the adhesive stuck better at this corner. It's, the adhesive has more of a, uh, a rubbery feel to it. It doesn't look like there's two layers of adhesive. It looks like it's only ever had the one. Right, so the chrome trim plate on the base of the camera next. I think we've got about seven screws. One more, there were eight. I'll lift this plate off. Underneath here, there's a screw, a spring here, a fine spring that runs into, operates that little lock. That's the end of film lock. This lever advances our frame counter each time and there's a spring underneath it to return it. There's another lever over here that operates the end of film lock. Now that you can only get that out by removing this whole dial so I'll leave, leave that there for the moment. There's a coil spring here which operates the capping plate. Be careful not to lose that. Put all these screws away. Our tripod socket on the bottom of the camera, typically these screws are loose. There's some rust on there which tells me that the camera was put down somewhere damp probably. Those screws weren't loose. The leatherette's on the front of the camera. Well, we already know we've got one loose leatherette. Let's see if we can encourage that off the camera without any fighting. There's corrosion under here. That white stuff is corrosion. That's corrosion products. You can see it on the body at this point. Now the other side. Well first we need to remove our shutter release button. And there's a leatherette patch there. Well that just fell off. I only had to touch that and it fell off. So we're lucky we're here today. I'll start working under the leatherette here with my Scaffold. Let's get this shutter release button off. The challenge here is to get the leather out off without any cuts, cracks, or crumblings, really. This one's not as loose as on the other side of the camera, which may mean there's not the same amount of corrosion on this side, which would mean that the corrosion on the other side was possibly down to a single incident of somebody with a wet hand holding the camera. 
Now I'm using my scalpel here as much as a pry bar as anything else to lever that leather head away gently bit by bit. Always be very careful around the edges of the body anywhere the leatherette is pulled over a, a sharp edge like this it tends to stick to a, a great degree and be reluctant to come loose well that leatherette certainly looks a bit cleaner there's a bit of corrosion product there but nothing too exciting okay next Next I can remove the whole front piece here I think. That's a little blanking disc that covers this piece here to, uh, so the leatherette doesn't show a dimple. So four screws hold the front cover on and under those four screws there will be a total of 12 washers. They are spring washers, they're a cup shaped washer and they're used to provide a lot of tension so that you can adjust the height of the, the distance between the lens flange and the film plane exactly ok, let's see if we can lift this off That's the, uh, the front pinion from the transfer shaft. I'll just release the shutter and we'll see if it runs down by itself. No, it doesn't. So I know it's sticky because I know that in a clean example that would have run down by itself. And as the mechanism runs that down it comes to a stop here until such stage as the capping plate lifts this piece and then the action can continue and then the shutter would fire. So the shutter itself looked like it was working fairly well. The mechanism controlling the action of the uh, opening and closing of the shutter for viewing purposes looks like it's sticky. And the camera body, let's recover those 12 washers. Those are uh, challenging to keep in position correctly while you're putting the front back on the camera, but it can certainly be done. The meter, I want to take that whole drum off there. Now there's a screw at this point, which just stops that cord from being able to fall off the uh, pulleys easily. We'll remove that. Earlier cameras didn't have that and they were a nuisance as a result. Just unhook that spring so that it's no longer under tension. And I'll pull the cord off this drum. At the top of the camera we have this drum. There's a bit of green corrosion you can see on that screw. Will that cord pull out through there or not? Yeah, it will. Okay, so that needs to be put to one side. There's a shutter cocking rack. That looks fine. Here's the transfer shaft. I'll remove that. This is quite greasy looking, but uh, that's in good condition. Just looking at the state of this. If I can, I'll remove the mirror at this stage to put it to one side carefully. The mirror, the mirror is not perfect. It's got a little bit of a dusty look to the surface. I don't know whether that is dust on the surface and whether that will clean or whether it won't. 
You can't really touch the surface of a front surface mirror with anything. It, uh, you tend to just make a mess of it. Basically you just take the polish off the silver which is an incredibly fine layer. And you end up with a haze where you, you had a, uh, a minor problem, you end up with a major problem. But what you can do is you can suspend that mirror and uh, clean it in an ultrasonic cleaner and that can certainly make a, dif a difference. It can be beneficial in some cases. You have to be very, very cautious about how much cleaning you give it because the ultrasonic cleaner will clean away dirt but it will also clean away silver. So it's a balancing act. It depends on what you see on your mirror as to whether or not it's going to be a good thing to do for you or not. If you see deposits of stuff on there that look like they might be loose, the ultrasonic cleaner will be your friend. If what you're looking at is some sort of deterioration of the silver surface, the ultrasonic cleaner is not going to do anything good about that and all it will end up doing is making your silver surface worse. However, that being said, I don't need to deal with that at the moment.